Hello, YouTube. Did the bulls just win? Yesterday, we talked about how the stock market might be about to rally. Well, oh my goodness, was it a good day? Apple's up by 4%. Google's up by 4 Tesla by 7 And we made history with the potential of a Bitcoin ETF coming online. We can also note that we had a perfect break of our downtrend here, which means that if this worked out, what do we need to know going into tomorrow? Because this was a pretty big day. There's a lot to go through. S&P's up by about 1.4%, NASDAQ up by about 2.2%, and uh, the NASDAQ is also here back above its 50 DMA on a closing basis, which means that these things actually have a chance of potentially reversing. So we got a lot to go through. Please stay tuned. I think we have a great show for you today. Uh, what this really comes down to is whether or not we're going to hold uh, this current area. If we're going to backtest, I want to see whether or not we close above or below this 50 DMA. It's pretty simple. It's 445. That would start to invalidate the head and shoulders area. Um, but the only thing which I'm currently noting, which might be a trap, and now I'll be more than happy to go through and present that story if it happens, is just a violation of the channel here. So let's try to see exactly what that means. Let's zoom in because uh, I don't know if the market believes us. We're going to talk about the history being made in a moment. But uh, being here at 50% yesterday at 46, it is a move higher. But we're right here at neutral, which means that People don't really believe this grayscale news and how it could be real, but um, there's more for us to go through, so please just stay tuned. All right, let's go. So the first thing we're going to do is grab a magnet, go to our 52-week uh, high. We're going to snap a downtrend. There we go. Let's go to a red line. We're now going to copy this, and uh, we're just going to clone it because if we're going in a channel of predictable pattern, meaning a predictable range, we just want to make sure we know what that is. So we noted here that that's the channel. Let's look at a 15-minute chart. We talked about this yesterday, how it was tapping it, it was tapping it, it was tapping that ask, and we got a win and went up. So every previous time, I uh, just couldn't quite do it. Hits it, bottom of the channel, hits it, bottom of the channel, goes below the channel, up, down, and now we're back above. So that's really what's been happening here. It's a slow summer day, volume's not elevated, but the price action seems pretty good. Um, and because this is playing out, um, if this is correct and we got that W, we should rally up to close a month out, which we're starting to see. Let's look at that weekly chart. Ah, we got that inside bar break bullish, which is what we talked about yesterday. After the 5% dip back down to our key area and we curled up, 5% uh, dip, dead cap bounce with an inside bar. Now we actually get that directional break and it's up. So what does that mean? The short-term trend is likely up. The, the short-term trend is likely going to support the seasonality chart. It doesn't mean it's a guarantee. It just means that it's likely. Why is it more likely? Well, other part we talked about was that on our monthly chart, I don't have it handy right now, but just trust me, it's the, uh, it's the pattern we're looking at right here. And uh, the important part is that we've now closed, uh, for now, right? we have to hold into Thursday, uh, back above 437. Uh, we're 12 points higher right now. That's like looking pretty good. It's looking like the same thing back to here where we get that hammer that sucks it back up. We get back above the low. And then we get an inside bar and then we go to new highs. So that's what I'm talking about if it's going to be 2007. Hopefully even following along as we go through all that. All right. So just before we go to our next segment, I'm going to ask you for a huge, huge favor. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I would really, really appreciate that. Your support goes a really long way. And uh, I just want to thank you ahead of time because uh, I'm grateful that I get to do what I love every day. And that is talk about stonks. All right, here we go. So now thinking about why does this matter? Where are we going from here? Yesterday, I mentioned that the, so the one day performance looks, sorry, at the beginning, I mentioned the one day. This is actually the one day performance here. Tesla pull, pull away winner. Um, after that crypto news, which we'll get to in a moment, um, that pretty much means that Tesla looks like it's going to try to get uh, some kind of tokenization or using crypto on their platform. That looks interesting. As we look out to the one week, looks pretty good. If we look out to the one month, it's looking better than it was before. Um, still, still a cut. 5% uh, is a dip, a pullback on Apple. Not sure if there's going to be more, but here's what's interesting. We go to Apple here. We look at the uh, the same chart and we note that we're down, we're curling, which is the, that's my favorite pattern, by the way, that curl. That's what our algo looks for. If you want to learn more, join us for 14 free days where you can trade with me, Justin from YouTube. I made some really timely buys yesterday. I bought about uh, 20 stocks yesterday and um, man, every single one of them is green. Uh, I think actually one of them was down. But anyways, looking at Apple, uh, what's important here is just that as of right now, if the king, meaning Apple, the largest block in the entire market, let's go no group, because the biggest block is the most important block. That's Apple. Why does Apple matter? Well, because as of right now, uh, at 184, we are back above both our 2021 and our 2022 highs. 
And for the Bulls, sorry, for the Bears story to be true, while we kind of need, not it's not a nice to have, it's a must have. Apple must be down. It's not doing it. It's over last week's high. It's looking like a bullish reversal here. Looking at QQQ, it's looking more constructive. It's right here in its apex, which means, man, it's right back to its 78% uh, retracement at 375.66. Man, we're awfully close to that area. So Apple is leading. QQQ is right there. Uh, S&P is not far behind. Man, does this, mar does this market want to go up? Well, if that's going to be the case, I would hope that the S&P is going to get back above 452 and QQQ back above 376, which means we claim both of the 78% retracement areas, which would give me not just uh, signs of confirmation for a short-term trend, but a more meaningful trend, which means we could retrace back up to the all-time high at 479.98. That's the all-time high that we have here on SPY. That's how we can get there. And the seasonality chart supports it. So watching those ones closely, there's a few more key charts we're going to look at. So stay tuned and we'll go through those in a moment. Here's the history is made news. Um, crypto scores landmark US legal win with grayscale ETF ruling. And we can note here that by looking at GBTC, the chart looks pretty happy. It is up by 18.5%. Uh, battling here with this 200 MA. And that just means that the net asset value or what GBTC would be worth if it was an ETF, um, the premium has now been reduced to about 24%. Um, don't take me, my word for it, just double check those numbers. But what that means is that there's a huge discount to what their book value is worth relative to uh, what spot Bitcoin is worth. That's why GBTC is up by 17%, but Bitcoin is only up by about 6.7. And the theory here is that if there is this, uh, they call it an ETF wrapper, if there's this ETF wrapper on GBTC, um, which is not an over-the-counter, people could buy it. There could be more demand than there is supply, which means prices go up. So the fact that we're seeing neutral here, which means that people don't fully believe this move, we're right at neutral. So we went from extreme greed to neutral, slightly down into fear. Now we dead cap bounce back up into neutral. We're seeing the breakout starting to happen on SPY. We notice that here by the weekly higher high. So we got three higher lows and one higher high. What does that mean? Two weeks of defense from the bulls. And now we got one week of offense, but this one week of offense is not yet confirmed. I'm trying to use, trying to use an analogy, which might, might make sense. So if this makes sense to you, please make sure to let me know. So two weeks of defense, two higher lows, one higher high, it's sort of a pattern. Here's what I want to watch for going into the weekly close. Is it going to turn into QQQ where we get a, uh, we get a higher high, but we close back below a failed breakout. That's like really, really, really important. We're not going to, we're not going to talk about bonds today. Uh, but I'm noticing a similar pattern happening here on TLT, which would actually also support stocks, which means if we just look here, I notice that same curl, <clears throat> excuse me, that same curl that we're noticing on the S&P on, and on the NASDAQ, boop, right? Boop, is it going to go back up? If yields go, sorry, if TLT goes up, it means stocks are usually going up with it. It means yields are going down, which means that we pro probably got a false break here on our chart, which I was looking for is my crash signal. So we're getting a lot of false breaks which means this market is trappy. It's also the summer, so there is lower volume. So let's take these things with a grain of salt, but understand what they're telling us. Market's neutral. Market's neutral as we're seeing tremendous news for Bitcoin, but there is some bearish news to con con counteract it. So crypto scores, land make thing, we talked about that. Let's just read the headlines. Uh, we don't have to read beyond the headline. That's all people care about. First, first Bitcoin ETF could be coming soon as court rules in favor of grayscale over SEC. Bitcoin rallies more than 7% as court sides with grayscale over the SEC crypto ETF case. Apple sets September 12th date to launch new iPhone 15 and new watches. Okay, cool. So why does this matter? Well, just before we get to the red, which I'm sure the bears are so desperate to see, um, the next thing I want to look at is just going to be that seasonality chart to try to understand what could actually drive us up or down. We've been talking a lot about the bear narrative lately. So let's have a look at this, uh, the seasonality chart and think about this with a bull tilt. So look at the Apple date here, September 12th. Okay, where does September 12th land on the seasonality chart? Oh man, that's like right here. That's like close to the high. That's correct. And then if we look at the FOMC calendar, um, the FOMC meeting is going to be September 1920. So what could that mean? It could mean both teams kind of get what they want. Um, going into the 20th, boop, right? That could be the Fed. That could be the, the Fed fade. But we could be rallying up an Apple. Maybe they got something else. Maybe they got a car. Maybe they got a, I don't know, an update to their VR set. I have no idea. I wouldn't bet against Apple. Um, so I'm watching pretty close to see what they could do into September uh, September 12th. And then I'm watching the Fed into the September 20th meeting. So I'm like, how could we go massively up, 
massively down, form a monthly higher low, and ultimately go higher for our Santa rally anyway. Well, Jerome, maybe here he's like, yeah, okay, uh, I'm pausing again, but I'm pausing and ready to raise rates. But then what happens at the next meeting? Well, he doesn't do anything, right? I don't, I, I don't think the Fed's going to raise anymore. I've kind of gone through this. I think they got one more. I don't think the next one really matters that much. But after uh, September, they're meeting again on meeting again on November 1 and 2, and then December 13, 14. So November here, oh my goodness. So like right here, when charts go basically straight up, they start to moon, Santa Claus comes, and we go to town. So watching it, uh, I could see it playing out. It's worked out so far. All right, now let's hear, uh, now let's hear the bear story because there has to be a reason why we're only at 50. We're not back in greed yet. China's debt dilemma. Oh my God, these are big numbers. $12.8 trillion local government debt. 76% economic output of 2022. And that's an increase of 62% from before the lockdowns. That's right. That is a terrible number. China's LGFV insiders say $9 trillion debt problems is worsening. That's the headlines going into here. August 23rd is currently the 29th. All right, here's one from today. China banks to cut rates on mortgages, deposits, and stimulus push. China's state banks are being enlisted, enlisted to support economy. Beijing has struggled to boost growth, investor confidence. Mmm, let's look at FXI. Ah, it's poking above the 50 weekly moving average by two cents. So it's two cents above a key area for the short-term support, which it's not been able to get back, uh, get over and hold uh, going back to like 2021. That's a long time. That was a fizzle. I tried to buy it into here, by the way. It failed, right? The reopening was a, a fail. We're back over the short-term price here. We still have to get above the 200 of May, stair step higher. Um, we have a death cross. There's uphill battles, but I could see this starting to be a reversal if they turn the stimulus taps back on. Why else would this be? Uh, would be would be why, why else would this be important? Well, because China's worsening eco economic slowdown is rippling across the world. It's not just China; it's the whole world. So look, they're announcing stimulus. They've been on this huge offensive to try to get uh, people to visit the country, and then Mr. P agrees to visit the C country in first trim since AW. I'm going to assume you know how to read. I'm going to ask you to read that just so that the YouTube gods are not uh, unhappy with us. But if you are enjoying the content, I will ask you to please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thank you again one more time ahead of time. So this is this could be a big deal. He's traveling to the seaboard country. It looks like this bromance might have been a little bit, uh, a little bit too high on its own supply. And now that bubble needs to pop. So why does this matter? Well, because we want to make money. We want to buy stocks. We want them to go up. So if we understand that stocks go up, stocks go down, stocks go sideways, what I want to do right now is look at a very simple thing, which is just whether or not we're back above the 50 DMA because three new stocks join the club, which is over for one day. Two days, which would be tomorrow, that could be the start of a trend. S&P, QQQ, SMH, and FXI. So China back over the 50. Chips back over the 50. NVIDIA with a new record closing high at 487.84. Record closing basis. We look at a line chart, record close. Strong chart, another IHS, another bounce off the 50, another bear trap. So that's so interesting, which means chips are leading tech. Tech is leading SPY. They're all over the 50 DMA again. We saw the volatility of the seasonality chart. Let's see if it plays out. It goes higher. Or if it fizzles, fizzles and gets back down, we're going to have to see the leader back below the 50. We're going to have to see Apple remain below the 50. It's awfully close. A lot of these names are like pretty close to the 50 DMA now. I want to see them over if the bulls are in control. I want to see the gap get filled, maybe a back test, then I want to see it move higher. I want to see some kind of cup with a handle and an advance. And think on Microsoft. I want to see it over that moving average. I want to see it go back up for the highs. Notably, I want it to reclaim these areas, notably 2021 high at 349.67 and last year's high at 338. So if we get back above uh, 350, man, back to the races. Apple's the leader. NVIDIA's already in new all-time highs. Uh, if Microsoft joins the party, man, the melt could start. The melt could continue. We could have more beer field rally. Those short sellers on the futures could go net long, as, as we've joked about before. And a lot of these other charts are so close to their 50 DMA now. Let's look through. So NVIDIA already over. Tesla, did it actually get it? It did. Tesla actually closed over its 50 DMA by 17 cents. Kudos, Tesla. You get it, sir. ARC is, pretty, uh, Arc is making progress about half of the way now after today. Looking to the DAX, awfully close. By closing at the high of the candle, I would expect there's follow-through pressure, which could lead to a break above the 50 DMA. Going back here to emerging markets, again, that China story. 
where emerging markets are up by 1.2%, getting pretty close to that 50 DMA here. I want to see a break over. Looking at the Nikkei or Japan, uh, looking, looking like it's awfully close. So, man, like, ah, oh, this looks like so much better than yesterday. And yeah, so if we look here at something like an Ether, massive lower wick, massive lower wick and a higher low, and then the pump. So there we go. Pamp it, baby. It's almost like they knew the news was coming. Oh, they would never do that. These guys would never cheat. They are honorable gentlemen. Um, Bitcoin making progress too. Look, it looks like it might want a W or do some kind of pot and handle. Get back up to the 50, maybe test it, then go higher. Watching closely here. And that's it. So thank you for tuning in. I think we went through a lot of content. There's a story for both sides. If you want to know what I thought going into this week and why I thought that now might be like 2007, that video is now queued up here on the left-hand side. If not, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you again.